Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at the changes that are coming to Super Auto Pets. This past weekend, Team Wood released a bunch of new changes to the test server, mainly being features, but included a few balance changes as well as bug fixes, but we're going to run through all of them just to see what changes are coming. The very first change is the addition of different languages, so if you go to the miscellaneous tab, you can click on the language, and all of the options that they added were Japanese, Korean, Chinese, German, French, Italian, Spanish, Polish, and Russian. And this is super cool. I think uh, this is definitely going to make the game more popular worldwide, uh, which is awesome to see because it was only in English beforehand. The next change is an in-game tip page for rule clarifications, which is when you go into arena mode or even versus and you open up the option menu, there is a game tips button that will tell you kind of the rules of how the game works. So the first one is pets with higher attack will trigger their ability before other pets with the same trigger type. Pets do not keep upgrades to attack, health experience, and health food that are gained during battle. Pets have a maximum attack and health of 50, and pets sell at 1 gold for each level. So I assume they'll add more tips to this, but this is really good just for people that kind of don't super understand how the game works, or especially the first one of people don't know when triggers will apply, uh, which is really cool. And I hope they definitely just have like kind of more of like a rule page maybe uh, instead of that, but I think that's a good start. And the next thing is they added an option to show achievements in the in-game pack overview. So if we go back into arena mode and we click on our pets, we have all of the pets in our pack, which is the standard pack. And then if you click achievements, it will show all of the pets that you have either a sticker or a ribbon for. And since I'm on the test server, I don't have it for any of them, but the pet, the ant would highlight if you had the sticker for the ant and then the ribbon would highlight if you had the ribbon, which is really cool to see what you need to be going for, especially if you're playing in your own custom pack or even weekly pack it's definitely really nice to keep track of especially if you like have a pet that's really strong and you're trying to go for it and you don't really know if you have it or not and speaking of achievements they also added a pop-up whenever you get an achievement so right here we don't have the pig if i combine the pig here to level two combine this one to level two and then combine them all to level three I get an achievement unlocked pet reach max level, which is really cool as well, because then you don't know if you've actually ever gotten at level three or not. And also there's differences in the uh, the UI. So now you know how many pets you actually need to level it up. Instead of just having the little lines between, you have the stars. If I buy a turtle, the turtle needs three stars to get level two. And also during the fight, which I know the turtle needs to be in the front, but during the fight, there's also some changes to the UI. You have differences with the levels, of course, that you saw in the shop. You have differences for the team name, and then also the uh, autoplay, pause, and fasts are updated as well. There's also one really cool option that was added. You can turn on the merge pet prompt on, so if you don't accidentally want to level up your pet, or for my case when I'm doing A to Z, if I try to not accidentally get a level 3, I can turn the merge pet prompt on, and then whenever I go into a uh, game, I can have these two otters here. And then when I lay the otter on top of the other, it says, are you sure that you want to merge your pets together? And then I click confirm, they will merge together. And this is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of annoying, maybe. I don't know, let's see if it happens on the buying of the pet. Because if it does, then it's kind of a ton of like friction. But if not, I don't think it's too bad. And it might be good for people that accidentally combine maybe on phone. I think mobile will be really good because I think I accidentally do that all the time. Yeah, so if you just place on top, it doesn't, but whenever you combine them, it gives you the prompt. So not too bad because most of the time you're just buying on top of the other pet. So maybe, maybe it's worth turning on. Maybe if you're on mobile, I don't think I will, but it's definitely a good addition to have. The next thing they added is sorting and filters to the achievements overview. So instead of just strictly being A to Z, you can sort by name, by tier. So we sorted by tier one. All the tier ones show up all the way to the tier sixes. Sort by name, which is the default. Or you can filter by only your unachieved or only your owned achievements, which is really cool to see. Instead of just having to scroll through going A to Z, which I know mine when I do A to Z is in order, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely really good. You can just look for the ones you don't have and then you can go for those or add those to your pack. Another really cool addition they added is the addition of randomizing, importing, exporting, and searching for custom packs. So if I go to create a custom pack, I can search for a pet to add. So let's say mouse, I can add the mouse, but that isn't really the coolest thing because there aren't really a ton of pets. 
They did add the randomize, which will make a random team, which will be cool for maybe challenges or if you just kind of want to make things harder, make things a bit fun. But the best thing is the export and the import option. So if I ever make a team for a video and you want to play that team yourself, instead of me just showing a picture of whatever my team is or not showing anything at all and then you don't know what to play, I can click export. I can export my team, copy it to clipboard, and then I can just paste it in the description of my video. And then what you can do is you can go to import, you can copy the code from the description and you can do it right here. And this is really popular in games like Hearthstone. So I think it was definitely kind of something that was coming eventually, but it's really awesome to see. And I think it's really, really good for creators as well as people that are wanting to try out builds that are maybe on Reddit or on the Discord or things like that. But those are kind of all the additions to features. They added a few balance changes. So if I go back to custom pack, the first is they changed the crow ability to uh, on level one cell, replace shop food with chocolate. On level two cell, it replaces one chocolate that gives two experience. And on level three, it replaces it with a chocolate that gives level or three experience, which is a lot better than it was previously because at level two, you would sell the chocolate. You would get two chocolates that give one experience a piece. So it would cost six gold from a level two crow. But now it's one chocolate that is just much stronger than the others. At level three, it's a chocolate that is much stronger than the other chocolate which I think is great. I think it's a good addition. I don't think the crow is great when leveled up, but when paired with like an alpaca or something, you can buy, sell a crow, and then you'll have a chocolate that gives two experience, which you could use to potentially get something level three, or you could use to get your alpaca level three, which could then level up stuff even quicker. Another change is the marmoset, which at level one, your next roll is free. Level two, your next two rolls are free. And level three, your next three rolls are free. I don't know if this rolls over from turn to turn, which I think would be really cool. Uh, I guess we might have to test that out. And at level one, it's different because you're not forced to roll when you sell the Marmoset. So let's say there's like an otter in the shop and you really want to buy it and you don't want to freeze up your shop, but you the only free slot you have is where the Marmoset would be. So you sell the Marmoset, you can buy the otter, and then you can use your free roll whenever you want. And that way you have an extra slot after buying that otter to where you could find something new. So I think the level one is a little bit better. And then it actually makes leveling up the marmoset actually worth something. And I think that's really, really good. I think the main goal, at least for most pets, is I think that they should always do something different on level up. Which I think most pets kind of do. But there are some where it's like leveling up the marmoset doesn't make any sense. Leveling up the crow doesn't really feel that great. But there are some pets like the scorpion which doesn't have any difference on level up, which maybe it could. I don't really know what that would be, but I think it is cool to actually have an incentive to level up every pet in the game. The other change was to the cassowary, which is at level one, it is still the same. If this has a strawberry friend, gain plus one attack and plus one health. At level two, if this has a strawberry friend, gain plus two attack and plus two health. So this is much better than before, because before at level two, you had to have two strawberry friends and you gain plus one, plus one, for each strawberry friend. So it kind of forced you to go all in on strawberry teams. And strawberry teams are very good, but whenever you play a cassowary or a shoebill or something like that, your team is the exact same every single time. And now you only have to have one other strawberry pet for the cassowary to be good. So you could see maybe some new builds that only require one strawberry and then you can go into like a velociraptor instead of just going shoe bill and four strawberry and trying to scale your team as fast as possible and then just getting coconuts and probably winning the game. There is one bug fix that was added, which is a pretty big one. The tiger used to copy uh, held food ability like the mushroom. So if it was a tiger behind an octopus and the octopus had a mushroom, when the octopus respawned, there would be two of them, which is not really how the tiger is supposed to work but it is how it was working, which made the tiger much stronger because the tiger would copy the octopus's ability and then the tiger would spawn two octopuses, making it insanely strong. And now that they fixed that, the tiger is still really strong. There's just a few things that don't really work with it, but it wasn't really intended to begin with. So I think it's definitely good that they fixed it. And then there are just a few rewording uh, changes. So one that says repeat X times Let's say, for example, the elephant. Uh, it says triggers one time instead of uh, repeats X times. 
because it was kind of confusing because at level one it repeated zero times and at level two it repeated one time which is the same but i think them just clarifying and saying it triggers once twice and three times is much better and kind of less confusing so those are all the changes coming to super auto pets most of them are just quality of life changes such as the merge pet prompts as well as all the updated ui during the fight and the addition of the languages is really awesome to see because it's going to make the game so much more widely available and hopefully so much more popular and then the small tweaks to the pets such as the marmoset and the cassowary and stuff like that i don't think we're super impactful but i think it's good that they're working on balances and working on bugs such as the tiger but i think this was mainly kind of a cleanup release i think they were just trying to polish the game and try and make it as accessible and as clean as possible before they start working on the next pets. So let me know what you think of the updates and let me know what you're most excited to see. I think my most excited thing about this update in particular is the export option. Just because as a creator, I think it's awesome for people to be able to use the packs that I'm showing off and this makes it so much easier instead of showing a picture or for the most part, whenever I don't show anything at all. So yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.